Um, this is Joyce Oneko, um, High Advocate for the Court of Kenya, presenting um, a WING webinar on March 21st. Please begin, Joyce. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to be talking about education for the empowerment of women, uh, which is what Mama Nagada is mandated to do empowering women through education, both uh, in formal and formal education. And uh, as you'll see on the next uh, on the second slide, the number of children who are out of school is 93 million worldwide, and 80% of uh, all the, the, these children live in sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. Now, the statistics in Kenya are just as bad, and uh, when we look at northeastern Kenya, which is uh, more or less a semi-arid and uh, almost a desert, the desert part of Kenya, most children do not go to school, and 29% of the kids who are out of school are girls. And uh, in Nairobi, which is the capital city, we have the informal sector. Uh, I think most of you will have heard of Kibera. And in these informal sectors, only 22% 22 of 15 to 17-year-old girls go to school. Now, uh, most girls do not go to school because of their cultural beliefs which uh, still see girls as homemakers and uh, who do not deserve to go to school. Uh, most of the times you find that uh, families do not have enough resources. And of course they choose the boys over the girls and take the boys to school instead of the girls, believing that uh, boys are uh, future world sources and will be able to look after their families. In my next slide about uh, hungry education, we look at uh, Mama Soldena, who is one of the oldest women we have worked with in uh, the rural areas. And she tells us her story of how she was denied education, and she really wanted to go to school. And uh, when she went to school one day and uh, wanted to find out what boys were being taught, her family was very, very upset with her because uh, they said this was embarrassing the family. Mama Fredona has a, a, a grandson that she really, really wants to go to school, and she has a granddaughter who she really, really wants to go to school. And she says she will treat them both the same way, so that both the girl and the boy can have the same opportunity. The next slide shows girls coming from fetching firewood. They are wearing their school uniform. And this is what Mama Feldana did most of the time, fetch firewood and fetch water. Mama Feldana was punished for sneaking to go to school. But uh, Mama Nadada is now making sure that uh, both boys and girls have the same chance to go to school. She wants to have the have grandchildren to have the same opportunity, and she wants to be able to have a chance to learn something by herself. So she is having education, uh, adult education, so that she can be able to read her Bible. Now, on the Millennium Development Goal, which is my next slide, all of us know that uh, universal primary education is one of the goals, and eliminating gender disparities at all levels of education by 2015. I don't think we will be we will able to fulfill this as a country. The right to education is enshrined in our constitution, and it says everyone, every person has the right to education. But still, poverty, 
especially among women, is creating many families' efforts to take their children to school. And again, when the primary education has been made free, theoretically, many girls still do not go to school. And I say primary education is free theoretically because we still have to pay things like building lazy, we still have to buy their own uniforms, and we still have to buy school books. And many poor families still cannot do those. And obviously, the girls are usually the culprits and they're the ones who are left behind. Now, when we've started finding out that what was hindering girls from going to school, the main reason that girls were staying to, from school is lack of sanitary powers. And I know in uh, Europe and in America, having sanitary powers when you have your monthly periods is something that is so basic, nobody thinks about it. But in Kenya, especially in the rural areas, those girls still miss one week of school every month because they have to stay home since they do not have protection. Now, uh, Mom and Dada is based at the shores of Lake Victoria. And uh, we found that we are having a lot of uh, very subtle prostitution at the beaches, the fishing beaches. And this was leading to pregnancy and school dropout. In uh, my slide, where which is headed insurance to girls' education, you will see something written J with a Yaku. That is Swahili for uh, uh, an, an advert on condom use. So we started teaching girls about condom use, which put us a little bit in trouble, but uh, eventually. It, Everybody in the community agrees with us that uh, people need protection. So we are getting there about uh, protecting girls about, uh, against unwanted pregnancy. There's a lot of uh, school dropouts, and uh, especially in the, age, in the age of uh, HIV and AIDS, we have had a lot of young girls being uh, withdrawn from school to care for their parents and sick relatives. And uh, when uh, a parent dies and the children are left orphans, girls usually are the ones who take over and become the carers for their siblings. Mom and Dada's mission is to enhance the well-being of the girl child and the women in a holistic manner. And uh, I say holistic because we cannot talk about education only and not other development issues that are uh, stopping girls from going to school. So we teach women and we teach girls how they can look after themselves, be able to look after their families, start with education but also concentrating on uh, other uh, income generating activities that would make it possible for them to uh, money to uh, buy school books, uniforms, and other items for their children. Now, in formal education, uh, Mama and Dada runs a girls' scholarship program and early child development, as you can see in the next slide, formal education. We also have women being trained on tailoring, weaving, and bakery, and of course, looking after animals. Uh, Mama and Dada also have training workshops uh, where we encourage women to get involved in leadership, starting from their households up, up to national level. Uh, in 2010, we started a program where we encourage women be able to talk about how they get involved in politics by vying for political positions, and we are still working on this. Now, I'll, I come now to our partnership with WING and how we have been joining our hands together on a supporting women through education. 
Depression and Health. In 2010, we had uh, three women from uh, Wing visit Mama and Dada in the village. And we had several activities on women and children's health. We had a very, very successful dental hygiene education. I am hoping that all of you are at my slide number seven. And we had women bring their children, even the ones without teeth, to be able to, be, to learn about dental hygiene. And we talked about traditional toothbrushes and other modern toothbrushes. We had a, a whole day of solar cooking technology education where we had women. Uh, get education on how to use solar cooking <laughs> using a very, very simple uh, apparatus that is just a cardboard lined with uh, film paper. And uh, we were able to teach to eat food that was cooked uh, just from uh, heating from the sun. And uh, the rain provided. 21 solar cookers to several women, women leaders in the groups. So we see one of our wing members, leading one of the women leaders, solar cookers. Uh, Mama and Dada hopes to continue working with uh, wing with uh, several of wing's aims, which is coaching, facilitating, and mentoring. With a, men, with a network of colleagues. In my next slide, we are having Andrea, Anna, and Pat visiting Mama and Dada to the village on the day that they arrived. Uh, during that uh, visit, Pat, who is also a nursing professor, was uh, President, when one of the babies was born in the, the, our community, this person. This community clinic was actually started by Mama Nabada about 10 years ago and has now been taken by the government, who gives one nurse, one nurse and one midwife. We are hoping that uh, during the 2012 summer, we will get students from uh, Pat's University in uh, San Diego who will come and work in the community dispensary for the women's wellness and uh, children's health. We are talking about women's uh, wellness because uh, the main hospital is about 15 kilometers away. And uh, this clinic we have that do not have any maternity bed or a lot. So women come in and have their babies and have to leave almost immediately. So we are hoping that we, uh, having this partnership, we will be able to find a way that we can teach women how to look after themselves. And in case somebody has uh, a baby in the, in the home, how they can look after themselves and the people who are attending to them without putting them at risk, especially of HIV infection. We are hoping that we can uh, turn research into action, which is one of the uh, mandates that we as an organization has. We hope that as we partner with WING, we will be able to find what is sustainable for the community and what is also meaningful learning the students that are available so that we can both have personal growth, professional growth for the students and something that uh, helps the communities. As we teach about <laughs> women's health, Female education and female education. We are hoping that 
women can get empowered mm -hmm. as well as are educated. We realize that. Even when we talk about women's empowerment, mm -hmm. that women cannot be empowered unless the girls are given the tools that will empower them as they grow older. And in my last slide, we look at this a woman who is very amputated and she is able to check how mm. many she got and how much she was going to get. Yes, yes. So we are going to read the Hadith. We are going to read the Hadith. We are going to read how she got it and how much she is going to be able to get it for it. Just a moment, I just made a mistake. Joyce? Yes. Joyce, I'm sorry. I'm I made a I made a mistake. I was putting other people on mute and I I wanted you to go back and talk about the woman who's counting the potatoes. Uh and if you would start with that again. I apologize. Okay, so what we have been teaching is that uh, as, the women, as the girls move on to the women who are going to be looking after their homes, they are able to do the business that they do with information. So this woman who is uh, selling her potatoes is in, the, in a market and she is counting how much she bought her potatoes for and how much she was going to get as profit. And the younger lady that is next to her is holding a book in her hand and counting how many fish she has bought and recording how much she bought them for. Find out how much profit she's going to get. So that is from the other application system that we have had. So that is the end of the presentation. Thank you very much. It was worth the wait and it was worth the technological um, piecing together that we had to do. Thank you so, so much, Joyce. Um, we, there, I'm, I, I, we have many people on the line. I've unmuted people and so I, uh, I look forward to people sharing their questions, and if you're not able to hear them, I'm sure Zara would be happy to uh, to pass along the questions or comments with clarity. But um, you you did not disappoint, uh, Joyce, and I thank you so so much, um, friends. Um, what kind of comments? Uh, or questions or observations would you like to make uh, based on Joyce's presentation? Well, um, hello everyone. This is Letitia. And so many things struck me as I was listening to Joyce. But since we have this one slide in front of us, I'm going to start here. Um, education equals knowledge, values, and skills. I'm just not quite sure how to respond to that. That's such an epiphany for me that education is greater than just academics and going to school. I mean, there's all different types of education, and in order for women to be powered, we need to be able to provide um, as much as we can. So the skill of properly brushing your teeth, that's education that empowers dental hygiene. I mean, I, I'm just floored at the presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Letitia. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think it's interesting to think about what, um, what assumptions 
those of us in particular in the West, but um, it could be anywhere, have, uh, when we hear the notion of empowering women through education, if we think about uh, what might be considered conventional forms of formal schooling, uh, which certainly are important and have their value. Um, but what Joyce has helped us to see, it's a both and. It is both that kind of formal education, but also the kind of community-based education that is interwoven with the uh, real life needs of people in their environments and in their communities, mm -hmm. whether it's in the marketplace, or in their homes with regard to cooking. One of, one of the most profound things I have learned from Joyce is that you have to ask yourself, why aren't the girls in school? And if they are off gathering water or firewood, um, or, or, or your comments today about the lack of sanitary pads and what an impact that has on girls' participation in education. These are the kinds of um, well, I don't, I don't know that they're the substance of the kind of policies that are made at the United <clears throat> Nations, and yet they're clearly, clearly influential in terms of the actual experience of girls. And I don't know that that someone who wasn't familiar with the daily life of people as, as Joyce is familiar, could, could understand what to provide. Mm -hmm. Other, thank you, Letitia, for kicking us off. Other comments or observations or questions? Don't be shy. Well, I have a question. Again, this is Letitia. When we talk about the millennium um, developmental, developmental goals, goals right? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes. How mm, how can I phrase this? Do we actually see us meeting those goals by two thousand fifteen? Uh, Joyce, I believe you you thought that wasn't realistic, but I'm wondering if you have more to say about that, about whether or not we're going to meet any of those MDGs by 2015. Yeah, um, I know the government usually is uh, statistics of uh, how many girls are going to school now as of the whole country, but when I look at my the community, because I, I work really down at, at grassroots, and I look at the girls that are still being drawn from school because they cannot afford or they can they do not have sanitary pads and uh, they have soiled the dresses once or twice and then the third time they are still embarrassed to go back to school. And I'm thinking, uh, are they even included in the Millennium Development Goals? And do they even know about the Millennium Development Goals? Because the, the, right, the, the increase in the girls who are going to school in the rural villages is so small that I do not think that uh, the government looking at having offered free primary education the student catching this. And then when I look at the free primary education that uh, Kenya has done very well in because it opened ways and means for many more children to get into primary school. But how many of those children are able to get an education? Because uh, we now have uh, a class of uh, between 60 and 80 children to one teacher. Mm -hmm. So how, how much education can, can a child get 
when there's one teacher who's standing in front and you are sitting at the back of the class. And eventually, most of these children are dropping out of school. And we find that most of the children who are dropping out of the school is because it is with girls, because girls tend to go to school later because they have to wake up early to make breakfast for the family or do something before they went to school. So as they come in, they are sitting at the back of the class. So eventually, since she is not getting anything in the class, she will drop off. So when I look at all this, I'm thinking it is not realistic that in two years, all girls will be going to school, or 80% of girls will be going to school. I don't think it is realistic. Uh, Joyce, you know, that leads me to ask, um, is there any, um, is there any interest uh, in the communities that you know in single sex education, in setting up schools only for girls, and perhaps setting them up um, even on a different schedule? Do you know what I mean? In other words, with the knowledge that they're going to have to come later um, and, and will have different interests and I just wonder if there would be any support for girls only schools. Yeah, I, I know of several women who are retired teachers <coughs> and uh, who are very interested in education. Uh, and at least four of them who would be very, very interested in uh, starting a, a girls only school. Especially primary, starting from uh, preschool to pri uh, end of primary school. But setting uh, up uh, a school and getting all the permits at the building is a very, very expensive exercise. So, for most people who are interested in this, especially women, it actually just remains at a dream stage. But there are very many people who are interested in this. And starting from preschool because it is very important for girls' self-esteem to start being enhanced right from the time that they are in preschool so that as they go to the higher classes, they know that they can do it just as boys can do it, if not better. That's right. Um, and I have another question, which is um, I'm wondering in in terms of the learning models that are used in the schools, especially with the numbers of children that there are, if the models that are used for education are, if I might put it this way, leftovers or hand-me-downs from the colonial era of sort of British or, or other models of education, that are not um, that are not particularly that are more lecture or rote learning rather than active learning or participatory learning, uh, Montessori or other kinds of hands-on learning. Is it the the things that I have seen very limited uh, that uh, that they are for the most part seem to be instruction of one by uh, of one teacher with children sort of sitting in rows and all paying attention to one person. Is that the predominant model? That is the model that we have. And uh, as a country, we are at the, in, uh, right now in the process of discussing how we change our education system because all our edu education is geared towards passing exams. And uh, first we had the British system, which I must say worked better. Then we decided to change our system, where we wanted uh, children to learn less. But in the process, we overloaded the children with so many subjects and so many things to learn that they ended up learning nothing. So we are looking at uh, 
a model that will allow children to be able to think for themselves. In the last 30 or so years, we have produced children who have to rely on the teacher for each and everything. And you can look at the teachers to go and carry out a research for something on their own without the teacher. Right. So, uh, we realized that it was not working, and uh, I'm hoping that when we change to the new system, I don't know what it is, that it's going to be able to give us to our children a way of participating in what they are learning, and also learning what is useful for them, because we learned some things that are completely useless, because I had to learn about Otto von Bismarck of Germany. I do not know what the use was for, yet I did not learn about the history of Kenya. So oh. the government is aware of that and is uh, actually right now working on uh, changing the model. But at the moment, it is all instructional and it is all road learning because at the end of the year, you have to do exams, so you have to learn and passenger. And we are finding that uh, most of the schools are actually have make children repeat one class as much as five times because if you're not uh, good enough to pass an exam, you're going to ruin the reputation of that school. So it is a big problem that we are having with the model we are using now. Thank you. Um, I, there, are, there are two more questions that have been shared with me that I'd like to ask you. One, one is, is there any provision for, for children, girls or boys, um, who have various forms of disability? Is there, is, um, is there any difference or extension of, of support to students with disabilities, or is that not yet on, on the radar screen? Uh, I know we have, uh, some, we have some schools which uh, are uh, a little children with uh, disabilities. We have several schools for children with uh, since we have an old school for the uh, a school for the blind, but um, most children who have uh, learning disabilities or just uh, children with uh, disabilities have a lot of problem because there is nothing specifically that uh, looks at what their special needs are. And I think that is one of the issues that the, 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 the current Ministry of Education is looking at, how those children can all be uh, supported. But in Nairobi, I know we have uh, three schools that have got integrated learning so that uh, children with disabilities are learning with other children, and it has worked out very well. But uh, not many schools are, are, are looking at that. So children with disabilities are having a lot of problems. And the, the other question, Joyce, that was sent to me is um, how might, how, and there's another one that's come in, how, how might companies or individuals outside of Kenya be helpful? For instance, I mean, with things that we might not have thought uh, before, like the provision of sanitary pads, or how how can people who want to be supportive of educating girls in Kenya, how can they be helpful? Uh, we have had uh, individuals and uh, organizations uh, who are interested in, uh, in educating girls support mom and Baba either by providing sanitary parts or providing scholarship because um, high school is, is very expensive, especially when girls go to boarding school, which allows them more time to read. So we have had uh, individuals or organizations approach us 
and art cast if we can uh, support a particular girl or whether they can support two girls or as they as they wish. What we say is that if uh, anybody wants to support a girl to go to high school, we do not find it useful paying school fees for a girl to go to school for one year, then leave her. So we only ask that if you take a girl to, to sponsor her, it is useful to sponsor her for the whole four years of education. And then you can have the chance to communicate with her and find out how she is doing in school. And uh, we used to have 20 girls at a time being sponsored by individuals and organizations. And uh, most of the organizations or individuals were from the U.S. Uh, but unfortunately, during the recession, most of the individuals were affected. And we, uh, we are currently having only three girls being sponsored by individuals. Joyce, how, uh, how much... Uh, how much we, get, uh, we get people who want to either send sanitary towels or send money to buy them. Uh, I always tell people that it is very difficult to ship anything and get it to Kenya. Sometimes uh, things do get lost, and sometimes right. you are asked to pay uh, duty on it. So if anybody wants to support uh, supply of sanitary towels, we are able to give them how they can do that. You know, so I think that when I post this on the website, I will also post a link to the Mama Nadata website as, uh, on Facebook as well so that people can uh, know how to contribute directly. Um, I, uh, I think that that would be an important, an important piece. How much, how much uh, what, what size scholarship is necessary to support a girl for let's say three years of high school. Uh, it's actually five hundred dollars per year, and that covers their tuition and uh, uniform. And we do this mostly for very basic schools. We don't send them to expensive schools, which are extremely expensive. So it is uh, five hundred dollars per year. So it's five hundred dollars U.S. dollars per year. U.S. dollars per year. Yes. Thank you. There, there was another question. You know, we mentioned that there are expectations for girls regarding cooking and caring for their families outside of of the of the educational experience. Are there are there also expectations for boys? Or I mean, do the boys have responsibilities other than school? Uh, or is it really uh, not expected of them? They have responsibilities like looking after livestock, looking after cows or something like that. But it is not as much because uh, uh, cows are looked after during the day when the boys are in school. So, so by the time they come back, uh, the, cow, the cows are back home. So they are sitting doing their homework, waiting for the girls to do the cooking and uh, fetch firewood and fetch uh, water. So the boys have responsibilities that are very limited. Thank you. But I am. Um, they don't ever cook. They don't cook. I see. Yeah. Um, I've I've taken everybody off mute for uh, in case I've missed a question or inadvertently not given someone the opportunity to make a comment or ask a question. We're coming near to the end of our time, so I, I want to be sure that everyone has had an opportunity to interact with Joyce. Um, okay, I am thrilled. I am absolutely thrilled that we were able to make this happen today. Um, thanks to all of our participants for their patience in waiting for the connection to come through. Thanks to Zaret for her persistence in helping us to connect 
and most of all, thanks to Joyce for uh, her preparation and her, her, her wonderful presentation today and for her dogged determination to, to help the people of uh, rural villages of Kenya in terms of accessing education. Thank you, everyone, and stay tuned for a fall series. We will have a fall series of webinars um, probably in October. And so we, um, we thank you for your interest, and we invite you to join us online. But goodbye for today. Thank you very, very much, everyone. Thank you so much as well. Thank you. Thank you.